Well, I would vote for Trump before I'd vote for Biden, just because I think with Biden, like he's no, he's he's gone. Like you know, he's gone. It's you're going to be relying on his cabinet, and I knew his cabinet would be this sideshow of diversity, and which is exactly what it is. You can't have those kind of people running a Ben and Jerry's. You, <laughs> you certainly can't have those kind of people running the most powerful government the world's ever known. It's nuts. It's nuts. All right, guys, so what we're about to watch here, what we're about to witness is Joe Rogan school, an uneducated liberal whose brain is clearly on MSNBC all day long, okay? Because unfortunately, what you have is probably half the population at the very least uh, that is just ignorant on certain topics and certain things that are happening in politics because liberal media networks like ABC, MSNBC, CNN, they simply don't talk about it, right? There's only one narrative, okay? And because of that, these people are clueless on certain subject matter. Uh, and specifically in this video, we're talking about January 6th, okay? This guy, to me, doesn't really seem to be all that educated in regards to the theories or ideas behind uh, the FBI's role or the federal go government's alleged role in January 6th. And Joe Rogan, whom I low-key kind of have some small issues with in regards to uh, him not bringing Trump on his platform, but again, that's another video for another day, is going to educate this guy who is an anti-Trump comedian on January 6th and some alternative explanations for the things that we saw happen that day. And this is truly a fascinating thing to behold because uh, it really does show you how a lot of these people just simply don't understand what's actually going on right they're ignorant which is why a lot of these people end up voting democrat right and um again that's unfortunately probably the primary reason for the state of this country but let's go ahead and, and react to it because this is kind of long but uh joe rogan here is going to give a pretty thorough explanation for the government's role or alleged role in january 6 which in my opinion is not really even a conspiracy anymore i think this is just something that we kind of all know most likely probably was the case so let's get into it but but further I think the january 6th thing is pretty bad well the january 6th thing is bad but also the intelligence agencies were involved in provoking people to go into the capitol building that's a fact you so wait a minute you're you're saying that that guy what's his name ray epps yeah you really think that he i don't was, know I don't know, but I do know that I think every that's other apparent. I think he's going to sue Fox. I think every other person who was involved in January 6th, who was involved in coordinating uh, a break in into the Capitol and in instigating people breaking, they were all arrested. This guy wasn't. Not only that, they were defending him in the New York Times, the Washington Post, all these different things, because saying that Fox News is unjustly accused him of instigating. Well, he clearly instigated. He yeah, did it on camera. Trip, right? I don't know if he was a Fed. I know a lot of people think he was a Fed. The people that were there were calling him a Fed. What I do know is when they asked the FBI, the FBI said, we can't tell you whether or not there were people that were there. Facts. <laughs> Facts. And again, the, the funny part about that is that, you know, again, the fact that they can't tell you tells you everything that you need to know because you would think that in a world where the FBI is not involved in this type of stuff, they'll just, no, we weren't, we weren't there. That's it, <laughs> right? But they can't tell you that they weren't involved because we all know that they were, <laughs> right? I mean, like, that, that's just kind of how it goes. Because the easy, simple answer, if you truly was not involved, is no, <laughs> right? We weren't involved. Now, does that mean that the FBI was the reason that everything that happened on January 6th happened the way it did? No, right? What it essentially means is that, well, maybe, just maybe, uh, the FBI and, you know, the so-called deep state, uh, they didn't really try to go out of their way to not make what happened on January 6th happen. And maybe in some cases, maybe they even facilitated it, right? Uh, again, doesn't mean they're responsible for the whole thing, okay? But it just means that, again, they weren't really trying to stop it from becoming violent and in some instances who knows maybe they encouraged it okay if they had um you know people that were a part of it but we we just don't know i don't know okay but i'm just saying 
hey, just based off the fact that the FBI can neither confirm nor deny that this is the case, it just leads me to believe that, hey, maybe, just maybe, it's a possibility, right? It's a possibility. We should be open to this possibility. That we're doing that. Now, there's been reports that there's hundreds of agents that were there that were doing that. I don't know if that's true either. But I do know that they do use agent provocateurs to disrupt peace, peaceful protests. It's a, a common tactic. What they do is, say if there's a, um, like the World Trade Organization is a great example. And that was in, I think, the 90s in Seattle. And so what they did was they were protesting the World Trade Organization. They were doing it peacefully. It was a big problem. So what they did is they sent in, allegedly, Asian provocateurs. They started smashing buildings and yeah. lighting things on fire. Now it's not a peaceful protest. Now they can bring in the police. Now they can start arresting people. And then they created a no-protest zone where literally if you had a pin on your jacket that was the WTO with a red line through it, they would not let you cross. You could not cross with a pin that was against the WTO and, and go to work. There was a no protest zone. So they, they, they silenced protest, which is right. a part of our freedom of speech. So this is a tactic that some government agencies uh, use okay, to stop okay, but, but peaceful wait a minute. protest. All right, so what you're saying is on January 6th, that uh, this event that obviously Trump organized, forget about the Giuliani stuff and the... Uh, you know whether they thought that it was he definitely stolen. encouraged people to protest yes but all right so you're saying that like the the fbi and nancy pelosi and and i'm, I'm not saying to, nancy pelosi no, no but like you're saying that like they're like you know we'll make this uh instead of uh an awkward protest we'll encourage it so that it'll be it'll backfire on Trump rather than being this rising of people that uh, believe that there was election corruption. I think it's certainly I possible. I think that would be hard. You think it's possible? I think it's possible. You don't think it's, wait a minute, you think it's hard to do? I think that, uh, you know, that the FBI or the CIA saying, hey, you know, Trump lost this, because here's what you're kind of implying. Trump lost the election. He is such a, a an amazing communicator, and he's convinced this loyal base that there was election interference. We don't want them to protest. How we can end this is if we encourage people to go beyond protesting to uh, essentially go into the Capitol and take a shit in the hallway. I mean, I'm exaggerating right. a little bit. Yeah. But, like, I don't see why that would be of use. Like, I wow. <laughs> wow. This guy is dense, right? This guy is extremely dense. But, again, this is your brain on MSNBC. This guy doesn't see the benefits of basically uh, essentially inciting peaceful protesters, okay, or having, you know, people that are essentially pushing – peaceful protesters to not be peaceful he doesn't see the political gain that democrats would get out of it when um if you look at everything that's happening as a result of january 6 uh them uh going after trump because of january 6 they basically impeached him over january 6 uh they smeared trump supporters over january 6 uh they've arrested trump supporters locked them up and threw away the key over january 6 uh, January 6th has overall been a net benefit for the Democrats, uh, and it is clear and obvious what the incentive is, right? It is to smear Trump and smear Trump supporters, and it worked. But this guy doesn't see what the benefit of that would be for them to basically encourage otherwise peaceful protesters to not necessarily be so peaceful. In the case of Ray Epps, he is seen on camera basically inciting violence right which is something that democrats are supposed to be against they're supposed to be against you know people who encourage people to commit acts of violence that day but for whatever reason he's not a or he wasn't a person of interest right for some time okay and now you know people don't think that that's strange that hey why was this person not a person of interest why was this guy not somebody that the fbi was interested in when 
they're interested in everybody and their grandma that just took a tour of the Capitol, sponsored by the Capitol Police, by the way, right, who basically were literally giving these people a tour of the Capitol, let them in, walked them around, right, let them take a dump on, you know, Pelosi's desk. I'm just saying, like, again, this is your brain on MSNBC. He's never heard it before. Like, he's never actually thought about the possibility that there's more or that could be more than meets the eye in regards to what happened on January 6th. He's never even thought about it because the liberal media powers that be, they don't want people to actually think about other possibilities or other explanations for what happened that day. It's just a liberal media narrative. Trump incited violence. He told these people to basically commit acts of violence. And that's it. That's the only narrative they want you to believe. I'm more suspicious why Trump didn't call for backup when you know or you know for uh the for the capitol police you know? <laughs> yeah but see he did right he 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 wanted the national guard to be there but democrats said no it was like now nah, we don't we're not we don't need it which again is a part of the whole reason why people think that it was a setup right it's because trump wanted more security there right but democrats thought that it would be a good idea not to i'm just saying right again this is your brain on MSNBC, right? He's never thought about this before. Never heard any of this stuff. This is the first time he's ever thought about any alternative explanations for what may have happened that day. I mean, it's like there was, and that like Michael Flynn's brother was, you know what I mean? Like there's there's way more conspiracy stuff against Trump. And, you know, then I think the the slim likelihood that, People were like, oh, Trump's a problem. Let's just get these people that are loyal to Trump to run into the Capitol so that we can arrest 300 people. What is people. this man talking about? Does that make sense? No. No. <laughs> it makes zero sense. <laughs> he just sounds like a blabbering fool, right? It makes zero sense. I don't even know what he was trying to say at all. No, it doesn't no. make sense. No, I think it's a standard tactic, especially when someone is the enemy of the intelligence agencies with Trump. That's absolutely the case. Trump set himself up against the intelligence agencies. Yeah. He did it openly and he did it brazenly. And a, a lot of people think it's very dangerous. Like the intelligence agencies are very important. You know, you want to find out what's going on in other countries. You want to find out what the threats to America are. You want to find out what terrorist activities are going to be taking place and stop them before. And, you know, JFK you, had his problem with the intelligence yeah, agencies. Yeah, well, yeah. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> right. And uh, this is why I'm low key worried about Vivek Ramaswamy, like openly being so anti uh, CIA and FBI and, you know, the alphabet mafia. Right. Because if he actually was to accumulate power, who knows? <laughs> right. Again, look what they try to do to Trump. Maybe you can't be so obvious about it in 2023. Right. Like you could get away with it back when, you know, John F. Kennedy was president. But I'm just saying, you know. Wouldn't be surprised if there is a lot more of the heat put on people like Vivek Ramaswamy, who is openly calling for that type of stuff, especially if his poll numbers continue to, um, you know, increase. Right. Um, but, yeah, people like Trump, people like Vivek Ramaswamy. Again, uh, yeah, it's very dangerous right? <laughs> when you are openly against the um, intelligence apparatus of the uh, federal government. I mean, look, it's unchecked power, right? It's That's the deep state. It's unchecked power. And I think Trump was very open about his disdain for the intelligence agencies. He created enemies in the intelligence agencies. It's standard for intelligence agencies in this country to encourage agent provocateurs or to employ agent provocateurs. And so you're saying when he was in Helsinki and he was saying, I believe Putin more than my intelligence community that was something the intelligence community was like we're gonna get him well i think they were going to get him in any way that they could because he's an enemy of the intelligence agencies and he was openly talking about them being incompetent and being corrupt and he you know he fired comey and you know he was against the fbi and yeah he's a loose cannon right he's a loose cannon that can't be controlled and, and they can't stand that. They can't stand a loose cannon that can't be controlled. Trump was actively, actively pushing the military 
to withdraw from the Middle East, from Afghanistan, and they was just like, no, right? We're just not going to do it. We're, we're quite literally just not going to do it. You remember General uh, Milley, right? Uh, he basically uh, said in a phone call with Nancy Pelosi uh, around January 6th, he was talking about how, um, you know, hey, if Trump orders some type of attack on China or something with nukes, you know, we're going to tell the Chinese ahead of time. Right. We're going to we're going to openly just, you know, stage a coup against the president. Right. Again, these people, again, Trump was anti-establishment. I mean, they did not like Trump. OK. And again, this is all the more reason. This is a stronger argument for why, you know, they would basically facilitate something like January 6th happening. OK. You know, look, it's a very dangerous thing. You talk to people that are intelligence agencies. Like, it's a very dangerous thing for a president to be at war with the intelligence agencies and to do it so publicly. And I think it's with, without a doubt when you have a gigantic, massive protest that a lot of people think is a threat to democracy. You have these people that is, and they're on the Capitol lawn. They're screaming and yelling. I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that they would encourage people to do things that were unlawful. Instead of peacefully protesting, which is what everybody was doing on the outside, which is totally legal, to take that and escalate it to entering into the Capitol. Now you can lock things down, and now you have real clear evidence that this president is responsible for this insurrection attempt, and this is dangerous, this is a threat to our democracy, and he's never going to be president again, we're going to indict him, we're going to go after him, we're going to do all these different things. Mm -hmm. I think it's not, it's not like, it's, there's a lot of shenanigans going on on both sides. It's not like a clear cut, like he shouldn't have done that and they should have done this. It's like there's a lot of fuckery and there's a lot that's been going on throughout history. Whenever people have unchecked power and unchecked influence and they, have, and they have enemies and Trump was their enemy. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Again, this guy, this guest, uh, yeah, that, that that is probably the average person in America right now. Unfortunately, in regards to their knowledge of alternative theories for why January 6th happened the way it did. Uh, that's the average voter, right? And again, that's a result of the fact that the mainstream liberal media is not educating people, okay? They're not presenting anything outside of the establishment narrative, and this guy's brain gets blown, his mind gets blown, when he hears a solid explanation for why we saw what we saw that day that is not just, well, Trump, you know, told these people to be violent, which is not what happened, right? Uh, but again, not surprised, right? Not surprised at all. The guy's an anti-Trumper. He's a liberal comedian. You know, he doesn't want to be educated. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.